Hi Ajesh, good morning. Hi sir, good morning. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine sir. Okay. Shall we start with your walk interview today? Yeah, sure sir. Okay. Could you please introduce about yourself? Yeah, this is Rajesh and I completed my graduation recently in the year of 2024 from UCB Lonnie. And when I was pursuing the, my graduation, I developed for some few applications to their for Spring, Spring Boot, Rest API, Microservices, to their for JPOC and JPW applications. Today I am here for such a new job as a question. Okay, good. So, first we will start with course Java. Sure, sir. So, can you tell me uh, why Java is popular in the market? What is the reason behind that? So, Java is mainly because it is a security it is there. And so many features are there in the Java, like encapsulation, multi threading and two great features are there and moreover every six months it is getting updating each and every month every six months that's the main reason it is there so that's the insecurity purpose giving great impact only those features anything else i'm no, not quite this okay what is the latest version of java in september it is going in 24. so do you know what are the new features introduced in 22 or 21 no sir i'm not aware up to 11 and 8 yeah up to 11 version you are aware okay. So, can you tell me uh, what is encapsulation? Encapsulation means it is the process of binding all the variables matters into the single entity. That's called encapsulation. To achieve the uh, single responsibility feature of the things, we can do this encapsulation. Okay, what is polymorphism? A single entity shows multiple forms of behavior, here, like compile time polymorphism and runtime polymorphism. We access the data from one class to the other class, so we have to rewrite our own logic. We can achieve the polymorphism, method overloading and overriding, we can achieve it. Okay. What is a constructor and how many types of constructors we can write in a class? Constructor means here if you want to create any instance of that particular class means you have to take care of constructor. There are two types of constructors are there. Here like uh, default constructor and uh, parameterized constructor. Default constructor only the automatically Java people is given. And parameterized constructor we have to implement the parameterized constructor and we have to mention any number of parameters in our class. How many constructors we can write in one class? We can we can give any number. Okay. What is constructor overriding? Constructor overriding it is not possible. Constructor overloading it is possible. Why it is not possible? Constructor means it will be applicable to the, only that particular class only. The other class if you want to go means you can't execute those things. You can't create that constructor. Okay. If you write a return type for the constructor then what will happen? It won't happen. Then it won't work like constructor. It works like as a method, normal method. Okay. How many ways we can write a method? We can maybe can create types by using return type, uh, with return type, without return type. By using method parameters, with parameters, without parameters, depends upon the scenarios. What is the difference between instance method and static method? Instance method and static method means, for example, if I want to share the data from network to the network for serialization, deserialization means, then I have to go with this particular instance method. When our object it is created, memory should be allocated. Coming to the static method, if it is fixed, that if some XOJ uh, data is there, that it is fixed for all the people means, then I have to go with static. Static will be reload at the time of class loading time only. Class will reload only one time. That one time memory should be allocated. Okay. So what is lambda expression? Lambda expression is introduced in Java 1.8 feature. So to execute methods like abstract methods, anonymously if you want to execute without any object creation means you have to take the help of lambda. It will give the additional information to the JVM instead of creating object they are executing like this. So that additional information we have to pass with the forward arrow symbol. What is functional interface in Java? Functional interface is also introduced in Java 1.8 feature. So, anonymously, if you want to execute the methods without creating any object, without creating any class names, references, if you want to execute those particular methods in a single line execution, if you want to do this, then I have to take the functional interface itself by using at the rate functional interface annotation. There is only one abstract method, and we can keep default methods and static methods as many as we want. Okay. What is optional class? Optional class is introduced in Java 1.8. So by using this optional class, you can avoid the null point exception. If I want to hit any API means there may be a chance one record if will comes. One record if it is null means then we have to create the null point exception. To overcome this issue, we have to go with the optional class. Okay, good. How can you rate yourself in the spring boot out of five? Out of five will go with four. Four. Okay. So what are the main advantages of using Spring Boot? Spring Boot is also one of the framework. When compared with the Spring, we can develop the applications here also. But coming to the plain screen, if you want to do any card operation like uh, repository classes, which is not like implementation, JPA template class, Hibernate template class, JDBC template class, we have to take. Coming to the screen, what repositories is there, you can execute those things. In future, if you want to do the, the database, if you want to migrate means automatically we have to migrate by changing the configurations. No need to touch any single line of source code, that is one great advantage. In the screen boot, 
embedded servers, embedded databases are there. In plain spring, it is not there. We have to do the configurations. That is also one of the great advantages. In configurations, we have to make a lot of in the spring, not in the spring mode. Okay. What do you mean by auto configuration? Auto configuration means whenever you use the data, enable auto configuration, it is configuration is done automatically by using the whatever the startup we added. That startup dependencies it is going to be loaded internally. That is going to be happening. Can you tell me any example for auto configuration? Like spring startup data JP, spring startup uh, uh, your data service like this. Okay. What are the embedded servers supported by Spring? Tomcat and JP. Only two. I know this. So how to change by default is Tomcat, right? Yeah. I want to change it to the JP. JP the default port number is port 8080 only. Then port number we have to mention as it is. And when I run the boot application, by default Tomcat server will start. Yes. Now my requirement is when I run the boot application, it should start with the JT server, not with the Tomcat server. Yeah. In the pom.xml, there we have to do the configuration, their exclusion tag and the tag is their tag. There we have to mention what the Tomcat and JT dependency we have to add. Okay. So what is actually? Yeah. It is ready, it's not like production ready features. How my Production, whenever it is goes to environmental to environmental, what is the health of that one, what is the info of that one, how many threads is consumed, how much heap memory is out we can monitor by using these attributes. What is config server? Config server is some exoded content, it is there, it is same for all the services, means instead of implementing all the services, we have to go with config server, like with config servers like this. There we have to mention and there we have to go. Uh, what is the main purpose of using config server? On which are some constant data we have to load from the all the services. What do you mean by constant data? It is, it is applicable for all the services. So next page code or XYZ configuration is applicable to all the services means we have to do. Suppose for example, my application is running, it is loading the data from the config server. After application started, I have done some changes to the data in the config server. Then do you need to restart the application or it will load the latest data from the config server? I am not aware of that. What is circuit breaker? Circuit breaker is a design pattern. So, for example, 5 to 10 services are there. Means one service is hitting another service, another service, 1, 2, 3, like it means if any services break down, is happening, means all the services getting issued will be break on this thing. In this scenario, we have to use uh, by using districts or residence. District is duplicated, duplicated right now. We have to use residence. So, what is fee and client? And why we need that? If you want to communicate from one service to the another service, accessing the data from one service to the other service, we have to go with PN client. Both should be, if we have to, if it is intra service communication, we have to go with PN client. Already we have REST template to the client. Why to go for only PN client? Then if the intra service communication is going to be happening, then we have to go with PN client. It's in synchronization manner, we can access the data. Intra service communication can I achieve by using web client also? Yes, we can achieve, but uh, whatever. What is service registry? Service registry we are using Eureka server. So how many services there? Which services going to we can monitor by using the Eureka server? Which and every service we have to register with Eureka server. What do you mean by load balance? Why we need it? Load balance means multiple services hitting means then uh, it will get some issues, it will take some time. So load by using the load balancing or the auto scaling, we have to mention. So load, oh, for example, five services are there. This AB is coming with this hitting this one means. So when our load it is going to be getting multiple request it is coming, this load it is going to be increased. Then auto scaling we have to mention and the services we have to deploy these things. It will be maybe the IP hashing based upon those things, it will be working. Okay. My last question for you. How do you secure microservices? So here in my project we use the JWT, JSON web token we are using. By using that token based authentication we are working. So when now we are reading that particular application, it will authorize that authentication and authorization it will say. If everything it is okay means unit token it should be created. Until and unless the token is available to you, can hit the data and you can get back the data. If meanwhile if it is we the data miss, then we have to face 401, 403 for bidden application issues we have to face. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, sir.